Yo, literally the worst page in Singapore to follow. If you're still following this page and you actually think, oh, you they, they actually make so so much good points, right? Please reassess. Okay. The guys who post up uh, these pictures are so fucking stupid. It's like, it's the Prager U of Singapore, like, basically. So, in this post, right, they're, they're talking about um, Pritam Singh. Um, criticism of the FICA bill They always do what they Can to argue for the government lah. But in their arguments right They're actually not really making real arguments Because they are always straw manning The opponents So basically what a straw man is Is like They will distort your argument So if let's say you, you say for example The shirt is red They make up a straw man and say why you say the shirt is not blue? Why you say the shirt is not black? No. It's stuff that you didn't say. Um, and there's a secondary meaning that can be taken from it. And they will dive into that secondary meaning. And they will dive into that secondary meaning. Regardless of whether or not that's what you intend. And um, so basically you see what Pritam Singh says here. So he says, we know that the government had been mulling over the introduction of this bill for many months. Why is it so difficult to undertake a period of public consultation before it was tabled for first reading? What he was meaning was he, he was talking directly about the bill. Approach. He's making the assumption that the government's probably had been building up this bill for months because there's no way that this 260 over pages of FICA bill had been set up. One day before what? It probably took months. That is his inference. Not that he understand that or he understood that the government suddenly had this bill and he had this secret knowledge. No. Pritam Singh had the same knowledge of all the Singaporeans. When all the Singaporeans heard about this bill in September, that's when he knew and that's when he had to read about it. His criticism here is just saying why didn't the government put forth um less top-down approach line like why didn't they consult the public first before making this bill he didn't even know that this bill was happening in the first place he just knew when everyone else knew in the news and in the media <sighs> okay next then they will go on to say that the opposition supports foreign interference okay but then again they will never ever quote any examples because actually the opposition was also mostly against foreign interference. There's no one party that's against FICA for its supposed intended purpose, which is to block foreign interference from messing around local politics and culture. They don't mind that they are being blocked off. What they do mind is that the government having too much control and having too much say about what is foreign interference and what is not and also the implications that the bill will have. They really believe that the opposition supports foreign interference. I just want them, please, just show me one citation. Show me one example of SDP, PSP, WP, even People's Voice saying that, that they want foreign interference in their politics as a, as a general statement or in their manifesto. Just prove it. They can't. Fucking liars. Next, their other criticism is against Manwai, and you know already what I feel about Manwai, right? But this is really unfair. So Manwai is saying, is it realistic or fair to expect parliamentarians to understand the pros and cons of the amendments in just a few hours of debate? So basically what it is, is you have less than one month, maybe three weeks to read a 260-page bill with many, many uncertainties and complexities, especially for those who are not exactly proficient with law terms or understanding what really constitute as to breaking the law and whatnot. Then you have just one day to disagree or agree with whether you want this bill or which is just performative and useless because the PAP is the super majority. So whatever sexy arguments you shuttle are just going to be overlooked anyways. Next, you have to weigh the implications of the bill with a minister who is a pro at mental gymnastics and reflecting which not only would burn more time in parliament but waste great mental labor on just getting to answer what the question originally meant after that you have to ask questions of which sector is it going to affect and how it will be affected then come to the amendments and suggestions to the bill some of which are accepted some rejected
finalized then you have to do a final weighing of the bill which is more or less finalized and within that span of few hours supposed to come up with the best argument reason and logic and statistical analysis that would have someone in support for or against the scenarios which would most likely be thought of after the amendments would have taken place so yeah i think a few rounds maybe even just a break in parliament for one to two weeks would have been ideal for parliamentarians to research and to think critically about these issues before passing into law i think that sounds more than reasonable and to say that this bill is rushed would be an understatement unless of course you're from the PAP, like, then you have been like secretly working on this for months already or years. So he can not fully understand all the implications of the bill, but he still can understand why it would be such that his conclusion would still not to be so supportive of it. So for example, if you would think of the vaccine, for example, when the vaccine was first made, imagine the government wanting to mandate it straight away without the WHO without the FDA without any of those approvals that would have come from all the raw data and collection of studies to support it. Obviously the vaccine most of us would be pro vaccine and would be accepting of it, right? But at that point of stage when it first released we wouldn't be fully behind it nor would we support mandating it because it's such a serious thing it could lead to a lot of haphazardous situations so the same thing is with the vaccine mandates here if you are going to mandate it you better make sure that there is high level evidence and it has been well thought of you have covered all the nuances and so on and so on same goes with a bill like this it should be further discussed like so the very same argument goes for finding nuances in vaccine mandates where people who are allergic to the vaccine shouldn't and can't be taking the vaccines. The same logic applies to this bill where there's going to be certain instances where you are going to find persons or people or companies that are not inherently political but do make political statements from time to time and how that will affect your reputation as a country if you impose any sanctions on them in regards to their freedom of speech and then they go on to quote Leong Man Wai again okay he said that someone can be arrested no reason given and if the evidence is offered later the government is not entitled or not obliged to reveal a source true that is true if okay so Wait, let's read the whole thing first, huh? What, then, I'll, then I'll explain why. So you can be detained, trial in absence, no judicial review for all the actions taken against you. True. So, Shamugan replies, Of all the things that have been said today, this one takes the cake. I don't know if he has read the bill or if he has read it. I do not know if he has understood it because I think we are talking about two different bills. All of these statements are completely untrue, so I don't know what Mr. Leong has read. I will ask him to read the bill carefully. Yeah, 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 yeah. So actually what Man Wai was saying is actually true okay? And then this page is also promoting um, what Shamugan is actually trying to deflect So rarely is a law fuck lah. So rarely is a law used in isolation For example, if you go and rape somebody, right? Fuck lah, stop ringing my fucking discord So for example, if you go and rape somebody Your actions, right, can be charged under multiple laws, okay, you can, if you, for example, you go and rape them and use a lot of force, first, okay, that, that could be counted as, you know, battery or assault, and then also, how you penetrate them, you know, you penetrate the mouth, penetrate the vagina, you penetrate what, that also can be under, under another charge, under another law, things like that. So, with the FICA, right, you can think of it like, Trace together. Trace together also on its own. It doesn't say that you know they, they can actually access all your phones and take all your gadgets away and basically destroy any privacy that you have by going through all your stuff if you commit any crime, right? Then after that later that fuckface Vivian came out to say, Oh yeah, sorry, I, I uh actually the CPC says that uh, we can combine this law and that law to come and take your shit and you know 
we detain you, shit like that lah. Basically, that's what Manwa is bringing up here. He's saying that basically, this fika can be used in conjunction with the CPC, right? Which is not far-fetched. This has happened before. You look at POFMA and how the government decides to come and attack certain anti-establishment activists like PJ. That, that I think that is it's, it's really, 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 I mean, it's, it, you want to talk about realistic, right? That has actually really happened. You want to talk about FICA being realistic? We have no evidence of really being vulnerable, okay? Or, you know, for example, you see, even Facebook has denied this. And then, a big organization like Facebook, what are their main intentions for denying that Singapore has been targeted? Why? Why would Facebook do this? Okay, I think they are a much more credible source. Then now the government says that uh, we actually have, uh, based on their own communication tools and the information available, you have reached a different conclusion. Okay, so what's your evidence? Then show the evidence. If you're so confident, then show it. Lah. Are, we, are we just supposed to take your word? If you're going to take your word, then I might as well take Facebook's word, right? Why would I take the government's word for it? If the government especially wants to pass this bill as quick as possible, of course they'll say this kind of thing, right? Fuck edgy matters, bro.